All right, guys, I'm getting ready to observe tomorrow's National Day of Silence. And, and in light of National Day of Silence, I don't actually plan on communicating or using my voice to communicate the lesson to you. So I'm making these videos now, uh, uh, kind of going through the angle relationships uh, in 10.8 right now, so that you guys have a video to watch tomorrow if you haven't already kind of read through this. And, um, and then we can just kind of get started with the exercises right away. So in short, today we are, this, this section cover is the last section of the chapter 10, and um, we have essentially three different types of angles to analyze, three different types of angles, and I'll be re revisiting these three angles as, as we go through, go through here. And the first sort of angle situation that, that we're going to need to solve for is one like this down here. Now, the exercise asks us to solve for this angle right here, x. And the first thing that we got to notice right away is this angle x is not a central angle. The vertex of the angle is not at the center of the circle. It's not a central angle. So x does not equal 70. The second thing we have to notice is that the vertex isn't on the circumference of the circle. It's not an inscribed angle. So x is not 35. It's not half a 70. It's something completely different. And so we need to kind of go through here and do some work to figure out exactly what x could be. And the hint, the secret to this, to this particular diagram in terms of the proof is by augmenting the diagram, drawing this chord right like this. What does that do for us? Well, one of the things that it does is it sets up a new angle, this blue angle right here. And you can see that this blue angle cuts out this arc, which is 70 degrees. So since this angle that we've now drawn in cuts out 70 degrees and it's an inscribed angle, we know this angle must be, and I'm going to get a little smaller with my pen, it must be, I'm actually going to bolt, zoom in here a little bit, even more. It must be 35 degrees, right? Half of 70, it's an inscribed angle. Well, the other thing you guys might notice is that this drawing, this auxiliary line, creates a second angle right here. And this second angle cuts out this arc, the 80 degree arc, meaning that this angle is 40 degrees, half of 80. And now let's return again by drawing that line, by augmenting the diagram with this line right here, what we've done is created a triangle with angles 35, 40, so now we can do a little math in order to figure out this angle right here, 180 minus 40 minus 35, let's see here, that's 140, so 140 minus 35 is 105. And now in order to solve for x, all we have to do is recognize that this is a straight line. This is a straight angle. So 105 and x must be supplementary. So 180 minus 105 must be equal to x, and that's 75. That's great. We did, we did the solution. It was, a, it was a nice little problem that we can kind of practice our inscribed angles. But now I'm asking you to take a step back here and think if there's a faster way we could have done this. And notice, do you see any relationship between what x ended up being 75 degrees and 80 and 70? Think about it for a second. If you think hard enough, you'd recognize that 75 is equal to half. 80 plus 70. Take a look. 80 and 70 is 150, and then half of that is 75. 
And sure enough, that is a that's a uh, let's see, scroll back out here. That's a that's a property now that we can identify. That's that's true of any angles of this case. Any angles of this case, this angle right here will be one half x and y. But I need to be very very clear, very very specific about what case that we're talking about. And I'm going to write it very shortly like this. It's the case where the vertex of the angle that we're looking for is inside is inside the circle see how the angle lies inside the circle and I'll say the vertex of the angle the vertex is inside the circle there it is there's our vertex inside the circle and when that's the case what we're doing with these two angles 80 and 70 is that we are adding them together and taking half and taking half of them so that's when the vertex is inside the circle oh yeah by the way I don't know if I mentioned I've got my three month hold here next to me so if I have to pause here in a few minutes because she gets finicky I'll, I'll, I'll just do that I'll, I'll make a quick pause you might hear in the background giggling like she's doing right now okay so the second property this this the second the second the second idea um hold on one second okay back again now the second kind of angle that we're going to be looking at is one like in this diagram right here I'll, I'll, I'll zoom in on it and what do you guys notice about this angle well in contrast to the first you might notice that the angle y the vertex for angle angle y lies outside the circle the last one this vertex was inside and now it's outside let's see if we can figure out kind of a property for figuring out what y is uh, pretty pretty efficiently and again there's always some secret there's always a secret and with this secret with this uh, particular diagram the secret again is augmenting the diagram like so And again, just like we did in the first case, looking for new inscribed angles. And then using this resulting triangle to solve. Okay. I think it's worth noting here that 30 degrees is the degree measure of this chord. It's not that angle. All right. Now, if you look hard enough, again, you're going to see two angles going on here. We've created by drawing this augmented, by augmenting the diagram with this line, we've draw, we've we've identified two new angles. Here's one of them. Again, this angle is inscribed in the circle. So, in making this line, this blue, this this line right here, augmenting our diagram, we've drawn a new inscribed angle and it cuts out this arc right here so if this arc is a hundred degrees then the inscribed angle is 50 and the second angle that it creates is this one right here another inscribed angle and you can see that the angle, that the arc that this angle cuts out is this arc right here that has a degree of 30. Which means that this little angle down in here must be half of 30, which is 15. Now again, we're solving for y. This is what we're solving for here. We have this and we can see our original, our, our triangle that's created here, just like this. So we have this triangle. We know that this is 15 degrees. We know that this right here is 50, and we can use that information that that's 50 degrees. Here, let me wipe out the 30 real quickly. Remember, that's the that's the arc measurement. It's the drawing of the arc measurement. We can use the 50 here then to determine well what's this angle right here. Well, again, this is a straight line. 
So 180, 180 minus 50 plus 150. And this angle here must be 130. And so now we got this triangle. We know this is 15, this is 130, so now we can solve for y by using the triangle angle sum theorem. So 180 minus 130 minus 115. Let's see here, this is 50. 50 minus 15. Let's see here, this is, uh, what's that, 35? So y is equal to 35. Now, I'm going to erase this right here so we can kind of see what was here originally. That was, that was here originally. Any way that you see that we could have gotten this 30, 35, y being 35, a little faster, given our, uh, given our arc measurements of 130. Give you guys a second to think about it. Remember, with the last example, we added these two angles together, or these two arc measurements together, and took half of it to get our angle. Now, do you see what's going on? Well, what if we took 100 minus 30, and then took half of that? What does that equal? 100 minus 30 is 70, and one half of 70 is 35. So again, to kind of capture this thought, when the vertex lies outside of the circle, you take the two angles that, that are cut, or excuse me, the two arc measures that are cut, and you subtract them and take half of that. So let me go minimize this and go back up and take, take note. So, okay, here it is. When the vertex is inside the circle, you add the two arc measures that get cut out and take half. When the vertex is outside the circle, what do you do? You subtract the two arc measures that get cut out and take half. Okay, so we've gotten two of our three, three kind of angle properties here. When the vertex of the angle is inside the circle, when the vertex of the uh, angle is outside the circle, and the last one, I'm gonna ask you to scroll, scroll, oh, there's when the vertex is, is outside. We just kind of formalize that when the vertex is outside and you want to find what the angle is when it's outside. And then finally, I'm going to draw your attention to this diagram right here. Let me zoom in. What happens when the vertex is on the circle? You know, that is when the vertex is created, the angle is created by a tangent line and a chord. Now notice that this, 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 this line right here is not the radius. We know that when that line is the radius, that forms a right angle. That forms a right angle. But what about when, uh, what about when the intersection is with a chord and the tangent line? Hold on one second. Okay, back again. Okay, well what we want to do here again is use, like we have with the last two diagrams, we want to use the properties of inscribed angles to help us out in terms of thinking about this. We want to solve for x. Let's see, how can we do this? Well, one thing we know for sure, that if we did draw this radius, this would be a right angle. But then we can extend the radius to make the diameter, and just like with the other two diagrams, we can create for ourselves an inscribed angle. An inscribed angle. What is that inscribed angle? Well, the arc, you guys will notice that the arc that it cuts out has a measure of 110 degrees. So that inscribed angle must be da -da -da, half of uh, 110. 
which is 55. So that's 55 degrees. Okay, great. All right, let's see here. How else can we approach this then? Well, let's see. Um, we know we have a triangle with one of the sides of the diameter, which means that we have a second inscribed angle, this one right here. And as we've learned in, in, in uh, 10 point, uh, 10 10.7, when we have a triangle with one of its sides being the diameter, this angle right here is 90 degrees. Why? Because you'll notice that the arc that it cuts out, since that's the diameter, is this opposite semicircle, which is 180 degrees. So half 180 is 90. Okay, well, we got some we got something going on here. Let's see. If we know this is 55, that's 90. Then what must this remaining angle of the triangle be right here? Let's see here. 180 minus all right, back again, lots of interruptions. So what we're just saying was that this triangle right here has a 55 degree angle, a 90 degree angle, and so now we're in a position to find out what this last angle is. And we'll do that by taking 180, triangle, angle, sum, subtract 90, subtract 55, and we get 35, which means that this angle right here is 35 degrees. But now we're in a position to solve for x. As we said before, since this radius forms a right angle with this tangent line, this angle is 90 degrees. So if this little chunk right here is 35, x must be 90 minus 35, which is 55. OK, so we solve for x. But now, like we did with the other two situations where the vertex is on the outside and where the vertex is on the inside, we have the vertex on the circle. What's the relationship between 55, de 55 degrees and 110? And you guessed it. 55 degrees is straight up half of 110. And this shouldn't surprise us because this is essentially an inscribed an inscribed angle where, you know, I'll do it in green, where here is one of the lines that inscribes the, uh, or that cuts out the, the, the angle. Here's the other one. So X is an inscribed angle where 110 degrees is its arc. It's pretty much just the inscribed angle situation. Okay, so now kind of pulling this all together, let me minimize and kind of clump this all together. Here's our major, major takeaway. So we have three situations. We looked at three situations today. The first one is when the vertex is inside the circle. The second one is when the vertex is outside the circle. And now we just looked at one where the vertex is on the circle, which we learned then that the angle is going just to be straight up half the arc measure. No adding or subtracting necessary. So when the vertex is inside the circle, as it was the case here, we would add the two arcs that get cut out and take half. When the vertex is outside the circle, we subtract the two arcs and take half. And finally, when the when the ang when the vertex is on the circle, we don't add or subtract, we just take half of the arc measure and and then that's it. All right, and perfect timing, got to get going.